everybody to another episode of the TPT Podcast. TPT Pachi Podcast. The TPT Podcast. Back in everybody to another episode of the TBT podcast. With me as always, Zach. Zach, what's happening? None much. Just got back from the gym, ready to talk about some Chiefs football. This is probably going to be the biggest test uh, of the season, so I'm pretty excited. Yeah, uh, I think this is kind of labeled the biggest game of the year. Um, I mean, think for a lot of people, it's kind of just the it is the maybe the, the Super Bowl rematch and maybe the Super Bowl again. People are calling it the family reunion bowl. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm super excited. It's like there's nothing like having a bye week and we've kind of been gone for almost two weeks. And then it's like if this was we were gone for two weeks and we have to go play Green Bay Packers, it would kind of just be like, all right, yeah, we're back. But it's like you get thrown right back in the mix of it of like you play the Philadelphia Eagles where our people outside of Kansas City are kind of just – you know, they kind of want to see the Chiefs maybe drop this game because people want to say, with you know, they're kind of built up to the ramp. To me, this game is the ultimate, like, for the Chiefs, you know, which we're going to get into is, like, a game where it really proves to just the, the NFL in general. Like, they won that game. They were the better team. So, yeah, I mean, I'm really excited. Um, I don't, But for me, I'm not big a big Monday night football guy. I would rather have this game be on Sunday night and – the Vikings and Broncos game be on Monday night. Cause I am not a big Monday guy. I like watching my games on Sunday night. I'm a big Sunday night guy. The NBC broadcasts are my favorite. Are, I mean, are you, are you a big Monday night guy? Uh, no, not really. Cause that Monday is the longest day of the year. The right, day that we yeah. play Monday night football. I, I also like NBC's broadcast. I actually like Collinsworth a lot. Most people uh, don't like him, but Collinsworth is my favorite uh, color guy that they have. Okay. Um, typically Monday night games. I mean, I have one, I remember, didn't we lose to Baltimore on a Monday night a few years ago? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've had some good memories like that Patriots game that one year. Uh, I think it was like oh, 44, yeah, 14. 44, 14 or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I'm more of a Sunday guy just, uh, getting out of the way on, I, I like noon games, Sunday at noon. No. That's my, that's my time. Yeah. I'm, I, this season's been great because I think I saw somewhere because we, the one game I went to, I used to live in Orlando. So the one game I got to watch in person was a one of thirty or a one one o'clock game in Florida, um, in Jacksonville. We I don't think we have a, a no, to be announced yet, but we don't have another one o'clock game for the rest of the season until, until you know maybe that that last week of the season when we play the Chargers. But all the other games have been four four o'clock for me, so I love it. I love the four o'clock games. You get to watch most of the times. You get to watch like the Ravens or the Bengals or, you know, uh, some of the better teams in the AFC at one. And then it's like you get that 4.30 game, don't kind of watch your team. And then the night game. But I feel like the night games, we kind of talked about it like last week. It's like the night games this year have been so bad. I know right now, uh, you know, we're kind of glancing over at the ravens Bengals game. That's a big game going on as we record this on Thursday. But I, I agree. I like – I don't know why. I'm not a big uh, Chris Collinsworth guy, even though he is from – uh, uh, he is from the uh, the area I'm from, but I am a big uh, a Sunday night guy. I, I love Sunday night football. I love Collinsworth because uh, it, it, I, I hear people say that he just loves Mahomes a little too much or Josh Allen or right. eh, whoever it is, but I get the most insight when I watch him do color more than any other guy like Aikman yeah. or Romo. I just feel like I get the most insight from Collinsworth. It's not like he knows more than Romo or Aikman about football. But I feel like that guy's life is football. You know, he has the right. PFF. He's like one of the uh, the head guys at PFF, and he just he just loves watching good football. So that's why that's why I like Collinsworth so much. Yeah, I mean, Chris Collinsworth is good. I just for some reason the the theme song for NBC and some of their you know their their the people they have there. I like Chris Sims. I like their pregame stuff. It's always like a, I, I think I mentioned this last week. So when you play at four thirty, you play at one. Your team loses, and then you have to watch the replays and the highlights on Sunday Night Football, uh, and it's just, they play it over and over and over, and you're like, oh, my gosh. Hopefully, uh, uh, you know, in, during the week, we don't have to listen to that uh, for ESPN because this is, you know, I turn on ESPN today. This is going to be the most talked-about game. Um, 
what is, you know, some of your thoughts as going into a game like this, like as a Chiefs fan, just as an NFL fan in general, like what are your first just initial thoughts as we dissect this Eagles game? Well, it with the two best teams in the league, you're going to learn a lot. But with us being in different conferences, it's not like last year when we played the Bengals or the, or the Bills in the regular season. It's not the same type of thing because there's no guarantee we see each other again. Um, we don't play each other very often and mm -hmm. it's, it just doesn't mean as much for uh, obviously seating purposes as well. And so it's, it's an important game, but it's no more, it's no more important than any game we play against an AFC opponent. Right. Yeah. And I agree. I think sometimes at, at times, like I said, it is a big game just because I would say this, it's more of a big game in the sense of just like the glitz and glamour. Um, you know, you have Jason Kelsey, you have Travis Kelsey, who are maybe the most popular NFL players at this moment. I mean, they're on everything. They got Christmas song that just came out. He's dating Taylor Swift. We all know that. Jason Kelsey had a, a, a documentary that came out. His his wife is doing, you know, uh, modeling stuff with the new Philly jackets and all this hype. And, and, and there's just a lot of hype around it. You know, you even got Donna Kelsey getting some of that hype during the Super Bowl. So I think there's just a lot of hype around it. And like you said, big picture, like record-wise, AFC championship, where is it going to be played, doesn't matter because it's in the NFC. Uh, but just from like a glitz and glamour standpoint, like, yeah, you can see it. And it's like, okay, you have the two teams that are in the Super Bowl. You know, was it kind of a fluke? Was it, you know, more so of, oh, the refs called a call that kind of benefited the Chiefs? Or can the Chiefs go out there and really just show them, you know, with almost a – people want to say, quote, unquote, lesser offense this year and prove that, okay, this is still – they're still the top dog in the NFL. I think that's really what it is. It's just kind of a, by definition, ESPN-type game. Yeah, I'm sure ESPN is like uh, whatever a good word for being excited, a more uh, yeah. complicated word uh, about having this game. And I'm – as a Chiefs fan, you know, it's a big game against a great opponent. Mm -hmm. But I compared to how I was going into the Dolphins game, I really am not like crazy about this game. And I, I feel like it's going to be the same going into even the Bills and the Bengals are not on the same level as the Eagles. It's just the conference <laughs> opponents matter so much more because you, you're going to see them a second time. Whether you like mm -hmm. it or not, the Eagles, there's a small chance we see them again. I mean, we might be the favorites out of each conference, but, you know, still a lot of football to play. And so I we should just take this as another week try to improve the offense and keep the defense playing the way it is. But I don't, I know when the game's over, we're going to see so many overreactions on all the movie right. shows. And I just am not in that boat. Like I'm not going to take as much away from this game as I do a game like last week against the Dolphins. Yeah. And, and, and that's kind of where I wanted to go. And is you said the exact thing is, you know, one overreaction, you don't want to have an overreaction. Um, to what's being take place because right now the Chiefs are just – even if the Ravens, you know, win tonight uh, versus the Bengals, they'll still be a game and a half ahead of the Ravens. Like the Chiefs, they we already know they have the West. They have the West. Right now it's just – it's it's focusing on winning those AFC games because the Ravens already have more AFC losses so far in the uh, AFC already. So, you know, the Chiefs lost obviously the Broncos and they lost to the Lions. You know, the, the the Ravens have already lost the two AFC teams. So right now it's just about obviously winning the AFC. Yeah, if you drop a game to an NFC opponent like the Eagles, you never want to lose. I'm not saying, oh, if we lose, oh, well. But you never want to lose. But at the end of the day, big picture-wise, yes, you want to win every game you go in. But at the end of the day, that Dolphins game, like you're kind of mentioning, is kind of almost, a you know, a different feel. I, I agree with you. I kind of go into this game and I'm kind of like, I don't feel as like, as hyped up, as ready to go, as like, you know, jittery as I did. I think it's just because mostly what we mentioned last week, our defense, the way our defense has been playing, the way the Eagles are still trying to figure things out, how they're kind of banged up. Um, but the main concern, I think, going into the bye week, what we concern, and you kind of mentioned it, is another week trying to get the offense better. What do you think the, the Chiefs fix or are going to fix this week after the bye week? I think we're going to get the ball a lot quicker this week compared to because we have no choice against the Eagles pass rush. Like it's not you're not going to be able to have these long developing plays. And I feel like the way we found our success thus far this season 
is through getting the ball to Rice fast. We've seen in smaller samples getting the ball to, to Tony and having him make plays. And even Sky Moore has done a few, made a few plays on like screen passes. So I think this week we're really going to get into that quick, uh, quick release throws from Mahomes to our playmakers. Yeah, and, and a guy you mentioned is Kadarius Tony. What? I don't. I, I think Kadarius Tony. I don't know if they're just not using him right, or if he's just necessarily not getting open. I just feel like he's the type of guy where you can just find ways to, like you said, kind of get him going in the screen game. It's like he's quick enough to just get us on third down. A team that I've watched is a team if you can kind of get them out of third. In short, is a lot of problems as the, the Cincinnati Bengals. But when they do get third and short, they are just on the money. And I kind of look at that and I'm like, well, that's something I want the Chiefs to kind of get is, and they did a little bit better job in that the, that first quarter, that first half, first Miami is getting third and short. They have two options: they can either run it, which they did well, or they can either just boom, they can get it out quick, like you're mentioning to a guy like Kadarius Tony, Sky Moore, Rishi Rice. And, and that's kind of what I want to see is, like, not necessarily just trying to set up a big player, just getting the big intermediate plays. It's like set up a nice third down. And I know it may sound crazy. Like, well, of course, you want to be successful on third down. But just being effective on third down, taking what's underneath, and then eventually, guess what? Guys like MVS, they're quick over the top. He's a tall receiver. Every now and then, Justin Watson, those guys are going to be open downfield. So I think setting up that third and short is going to be a big part of how this offense this weekend gets open. Uh, is there any other guys you think, you know, th this is how we kind of set up those, those quicker, those quick, quicker passes, a quicker uh, uh, scheme and offense? Yeah, obviously Kelsey, but the way you had mentioned Tony, and I saw a report that Reed had been limiting Tony because, I mean, he doesn't really make it through seasons if you play him as many snaps as you should, like a number one or number two receiver. And so right. I'm hoping – I'm hoping that that is true and that he really has a spot on our game plan come later in the season where he can be a playmaker. And I wouldn't even put it past Andy because Andy does this all the time with his top guys. And he does it. Um, he's done it every year since we've had Mahomes. We've not shown anything during the regular season. That's why we are yet to lose before overtime of the AFC championship game. Cause we are not the same team in the playoffs as we are the regular season. So Mainly to, to, Tony, Kelsey, and Rice. I mean, they're both – they're all three great after the catch. And I think we're going to keep getting Rice involved because his numbers, his separation numbers aren't great. But we know what he can do after the catch. So what do you do in that situation? You get quick, easy passes. If they're playing off screen passes, quick slants, stuff like that, where we can get our playmakers the ball because they don't really have the route running capabilities to have these long, complex plays with uh with like to get open yeah and, and the thing is going into this weekend is you know i look at some of the, the eagles love to play a lot of man to man love to play a lot of man to man and sometimes that's gotten the eagles in trouble because they are lately they've been one of the worst pass defenses in the league during the bottom 20 in the nfl and pass defenses teams have been able to pass the ball or seven but i think the problem has been is I keep saying that every week. It's like, oh, this team's secondary hasn't been good as a Chiefs fan, but our receivers still haven't been able to get open on man-to-man. -man. And that's why I just kind of have a concern is if this is the game, and I we've almost said every week, if this is the game for the Chiefs to go out there and be like, hey, receivers, this is this is your time, it's versus the Eagles. They have a great yeah. defense. And if our offensive line is able to block, there's got they, these guys should be open. It's not – can no, these guys have to get open because this secondary has not been able to keep receivers. Uh, Dallas, you name it, any team they Washington, these teams have absolutely put up numbers versus them. You, I mean, we saw a uh, uh, Sam Howell, Sam Howell went absolutely berserk versus secondary. So that's why I think if you can kind of hold this defensive line of the Eagles, which uh, there has been problems at times with our tackles, but I think. If this offensive line can hold them, these receivers have to be able to have a game versus Philadelphia Eagles secondary. I know they went out and they got a couple um, – safe. they got a safety from uh, Tennessee. Uh, they got a Kevin Byers yeah. from uh, yeah Tennessee. Uh, and I, I know that they've tried to make some moves, uh, bringing guys in at the cornerback position. But this is this has got to be a, a secondary that they really have to – after, especially after the bye week, and we know what Andy Reid implements after the bye week, because you mentioned it. Um, Andy Reid, I don't know if he holds stuff back, 
Like people try to say, oh, Andy Reid holds stuff back. I don't think he holds stuff back. I think he just sees things in a bigger picture and longer period of time. I think he looks at more tape. I think he looks at some of the opponents he has coming up. And he says, this is what we have to do. And then that's when we always see our offense click, click, click. Or you see a specific player click later on the season. We saw with MVS. Let's not forget what he was in the playoffs, especially versus the, the Bengals. Let's not forget how good he was later on the season. Let's not forget how good Sky Moore was in that in that uh, AFC Championship game, in the Super Bowl, mm-hmm. when, again, those guys were able to have – Andy Reid has to have a bigger picture when he's able to go against some of these guys the second time. And, listen, he's played the Eagles almost – three times in the last four years. So, you know, I, I think Andy Reid is definitely going to have a big-time game plan for the Eagles game. Yeah, this is the game to get your passing game going. And it's surprising because compared to last year, I mean, last year they were elite against the run and the pass because they still right. have Slay. They still have Bradbury and they've added Bayard. And so it's kind of confusing why they're not a good pass defense, especially when you consider their pass rush with Reddick and Jim yeah. Carter and uh, – What's the other D tackle? The big dude. I guess he's not as much a pass rusher, but the, with the pass rush, they Fletcher have, Cox. Yeah, yeah, Fletcher Cox as well as right. uh, Jordan Davis. They all rotate. Right, yeah. Um, and I was, it, it's very confusing because you know there's always these units that are confusing. Why, like, why aren't you good? This yeah. Eagles, this Eagles pass defense is one of them, and so I would not be surprised if Andy pulls out the strings this game because I mean we've seen in the past against top teams. We will randomly destroy a top team. And right. not like the 49ers last year, they weren't yeah, elite yeah. up to that point. But right. every game after we played them, they won like a, a lot in a row. And yeah, especially back in Mahomes. The rest of the year. Yeah. Especially Mahomes' early days. Like I remember we would go against the Ravens or we would go against like a, a, that, that Bills team in 2020. And it just seems like it's a whole different offense when we play against an elite team. And so I have I have high expectations for the offense this this week. The defense, however, although it's been elite, like it kind of sounds crazy to say that the defense might have a tough time, but I am very confident that this is going to be the most points we allow all year. Yeah, right. Because not only does that mean they necessarily pay back. Yeah, not not necessarily. It's just I think I highlighted this last week. Losing Nick Bolton for this game in particular is huge. We can we can not have Nick Bolton when we play the Bills because they don't run the ball. That's fine. When we have the Bills, Tranquil can do just a fine job. But for this Eagles team, with their rushing offense and Jalen Hurts being a dual threat, not having Bolton is going to be huge because not even just the fumble recoveries he had last year in the Super Bowl. How many times did he break down in front of Gainwell or in front of uh, Miles Sanders and hold him for like a one-yard gain when there was a bunch of open field? Right, yeah. And so – I, I'm pretty confident that we're going to allow a lot more points than we have um, in other games this year, which is fine because we don't have our best run-stopping defender. And so. Yeah, and and, and I, I, I agree. It's – you kind of nail on the head. It's, it's not necessarily meaning that the, Eagle, the Chiefs defense is going to play bad. It's just they have a good rush. Like, Jason Kelsey and these guys are maulers up front. Like – we were a very good passing D. Like, if you want to drop, the Eagles want to get in the game where they want to drop back and pass 30, 40 times. Yeah. Please. Please. That's not going to work. That's not going to work because let's not forget Jalen Hurts was the one doing the running during that, during that uh, Super Bowl. Who was gassed in the second half during that game? Jalen Hurts. They did not let the, the Eagles' offense get going. They didn't let those running backs get going. I don't know if they're going to be able to get be able to do that again because let's all remember Nick Bolton was almost the MVP of that Super Bowl. Yep. Nick Bolton had what a, a two almost two fumble recoveries if they would have uh, called one of those on Dallas Goddard. I mean Nick Bolton was phenomenal. Yeah. He was phenomenal that game stopping the run and Swift has played Swift has played well this season. I, I yeah. think I, I think this game is going to be a game where they score in the 30s. And that I don't think I, I think the Chiefs are going to have some turnovers. I think they're going to they're going to get get a fumble. They're going to get a pick. I think they're going to play well. They're going to get the sacks. But I think they're just going to have those plays where it's like that dude just ran 30 yards. Like he just had he just boom up the gaps for 30 yards. Like they just they had and we all know what's going to happen if it's third and one. I mean we, yeah. we know it's going to happen if it's third and one. They're gonna they're gonna run the they're gonna run the little tush push. So yeah, I think they're I think 
for the for the Eagles offense, they're gonna be able to run the ball a little bit. And that is my biggest concern is if they can stop the run and make them get into the passing game. The way our corner's been playing, I'm not too concerned about AJ Brown and Devontae Smith. I'm not. And that's also huge that Goddard's out for the next few weeks. So right, we won't yeah. have to deal with Goddard. He had a couple big catches in the Super Bowl. I think one did get called back, I believe. Or no, Devontae Smith got called back. Yeah, yeah, uh, sorry. So, he got yeah. blew up on that play. Yeah. Uh but Goddard was was big in the Super Bowl, like on third down. I remember there's multiple times where Hertz mm-hmm. uh drifted outside the pocket and uh laid a dime for Dallas Goddard. So we'll see. We haven't seen their offense without Goddard because he hasn't been hurt since uh mm-hmm. last year. And so we'll see how that looks. Again, the corners, I mean, like, I'm not worried about AJ Brown. I mean, he's gonna get his, he's gonna get his 70, 80, but he's not doing us like he's doing other teams. That's not happening. No, because no. Sneed's Sneed's gonna play physical with him. McDuffie's gonna be on uh Devontae Smith. And that's just how we do it. We're gonna get we're gonna rush the pass, we're gonna bring blitzes. And so I want to dare them to throw the ball because I don't want them to run the ball at all. And and if I I'm gonna be honest, if this is a game where the Chiefs have it where it's third and long or even third and six, third and seven situations, I think the Eagles are gonna be in trouble because Jalen Hurts, let's he's coming off of injury. Like he this he needed this bye week to get right. Uh, I think it was an ankle injury, and he had a little bit of a knee problem as well. So this is a, a week where he's he's going to be maybe limited mobility. And people kind of get this twist as they have you hear Jason Kelsey here, uh, uh, all these you know Elaine Johnson, all these guys on on the Eagles' uh, offensive line. They're not a great passing or pass blocking offensive line. They they will run it down your throat. That's what they are. These offensive line were designed to do. People forget last year going into this game, they they talked about the offensive line so much. I remember just looking at the stats. I'm going, they've given up 15 more sacks than the Chiefs on the year. So that's why I'm like going into this game. If they really, like you said, if they want to get into just a, a passing game, by all means, because the way Steve Spagnola has just been able to just bring in guys in and out, like Leo Chanel, all these guys that are able to just come in the game and make plays. So that's why I think if the Chiefs can kind of get the Eagles in these pa- obvious passing downs, I, I think that's going to have a huge effect on the game just because Chris Jones, and that's really what I was trying to get at, is he's going to have to have himself a game. I feel like he's been quiet these last couple he's, of weeks. Yeah. What do you expect from Chris Jones in this game? I mean, I want to get – he needs just to get pressure and he needs to do good clocking at the inside, which I haven't noticed him. It's different than an O lineman. You want to notice the D lineman. You want to notice them more than anyone in the game because they need to be wrecking havoc. And right. I haven't noticed Chris Jones the last three weeks, which I don't think in his career he's ever been this absent, or at least when I've been watching him. And so we're going to need a big game from him because, I mean, Omena, who's great, Karloftis has been playing great. We're great at bringing blitzes. But mm-hmm. he is the one guy on that line that abs- can wreck a game. Unlike yeah. any of those, those guys all feed off of Chris Jones. If Chris Jones is taking on double teams, that's where they get theirs. But they're not game wreckers, okay, respectfully. And so we need Chris Jones to have a huge game against this team, especially with this O-line that they have. And I know Chris Jones isn't like the biggest run defender. He's more of a pass rusher from the interior. But right. he has the ability to clog up. It's just he's – He's kind of like uh, a TJ Watt. He's always looking for the pressure. So he kind of oversteps uh, yeah. where he should be if he's run defending. And so we just – we need him to be – play like old Chris Jones, like early season Chris Jones. Yeah, I think this is a game where, like you said, it's like he's going to have to be a lane clogger this game. He's going to have to go to the early Chris Jones years when you had Tom Ali and Justin Houston when it was like just be 350. Just sit there and be – Six six three fifty. Like just clog the lanes. Do not let sweat just manage the clock because this is what I'm afraid of. Is when you have a Chiefs team who they don't. This Chiefs team does not score quickly. We don't. We do not score quickly. So if the Eagles are able to just let the clock run, they just let the clock just bleed and bleed and bleed. This game, that's when it gets dangerous because this is a Chiefs team who's again we mentioned who has to go to more of a quick. You know, kind of just a, a Alex Smith like offense. They're not sitting there dropping back, especially versus when you have sweat out there and you have some of the guys that are going to be coming after Mahomes. I don't know if Jalen Carter will be out there, 
you know, some of these guys are going to be breathing down Mahomes neck. He's not able to just sit there and just be, you know, 2018 Mahomes and just run around and just do all these type of things. It's going to be at where it's bam, 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 time, time, timing throws where, again, like I said, third and short, trying to run the ball. Um, and that's where I think Pacheco's got to got to be big. I mean, he had a great welcome home game versus the uh, the Jets. You know, he's from New Jersey. I know he grew up a big Eagles fan. So it's like, hey, if this is a time where you want to, you know, you want to play, you want to show your, uh, your your childhood team what you got. I, I think this is a game where the Chiefs have to kind of just manage the clock, keep the Eagles off there, keep, you know, uh, Jalen Hurts cold, keep these receivers cold like A.J. Brown, um, and just keep the defense tired and just really just pound the defense away um, because they, they do have some dogs up front. Like I mentioned before, I'm not – I'm really not too concerned – about their uh, secondary. And I don't really know who they put on Travis Kelsey. Who do you think they're going to try to, you know, put on Kelsey? Who do you think their guys, their, 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 their quote unquote Kelsey stopper? I know. Uh, I don't, they don't, I mean, they don't have a stopper. They don't have like a Derwin James that they can go to. Obviously they trade for Bayard. I don't really know if he matches up with tight ends or if he's more like a free but, safety. Yeah, he's, he's a smaller, he's a nimble guy, I should say. Yeah. I mean, they're probably going to, if they, if they do what they should do, they will play man, which I know they play a lot of man, and right. they will bracket Kelsey with a safety and then someone else over the, or a corner and then someone else over the top. I don't know who they use to guard their tight ends, um, but Kelsey feasted against them last year. They've only gotten worse personnel wise, other than adding Bayard. Kelsey was right. open basically the entire game against the Eagles last year, especially that the, that first quarter where he had that huge uh, catch on like the first play of the game and then that that touchdown. So if they've learned anything from the Super Bowl, he's going to be attracting a lot of attention. If they haven't, I mean, Kelsey's going to feast because no one on that defense can handle him. Right. And a, a thing we mentioned earlier is I think the guy that, you know, we got Mahomes, we have Kelsey, you know, we have Pacheco Rice. We also got the guy who's had the most success, uh, especially versus the Eagles, Andy Reid. He's 4-0. And he's twenty four and three after the bye week in his career. We talked about it a, a little bit earlier, but what makes him so good just after the bye week? Why does his teams get so hot after the bye week? We saw in twenty twenty one where everyone was freaking out. Our offense stinks, and after the bye week, it was like everything just clicked. Obviously, we didn't win the Super Bowl year, but we got all the way back to the AFC Championship game. Why is he so good after the bye week? And why is he so good versus former team? I mean, it's like a mini off season. If you give Andy, I mean, there's a reason we always come out firing the first two games of the year. Other than this year, this is like an outlier. But usually, right, our Septembers are undefeated. We go four and zero almost every single year, and that's because there's an off season preceding it. The buy is like a mini off season. If it's working, don't don't break it. And if it's not working, he has two weeks to fix it. And it's because he's simply he's like the greatest offensive play caller and schemer of all time. So. The right. more time you give someone like that, the more dangerous the offense is going to get. And that's why that's why I think the offense is going to come out and put up points. We're going to put up points for sure. Yeah, I agree. Like we're going to have the first the first 20 plays we have drawn up are going to be nasty, I promise. Right. Just like against the Dolphins. And I feel like Andy does that against the good teams. The first couple drives are always nasty. Yeah, and I, I will almost guarantee uh, – this is something I should have I should have suggested the guys to put on our betting show best bets is the Chiefs first drive touchdown. I think Andy Reid, I, I think there's still a little bad blood between him and the Eagles and how he kind of just got fired and kind of just how he went out. I think there's still a little just bad blood. I know the Eagles fans do respect Coach Reid and they still do love Andy Reid, but I think there's some bad blood there. 2013 won big, uh, 2017 close game won that one. Uh, it's like every year he goes up against the, every four years he goes up against the Eagles. He just, it's like he has a little bit, some extra for Howie Roseman and some of the, some of the people that are still over there when mm -hmm. he was over there for the Eagles. So yeah, I, I, I just, I don't get that feeling often. I don't, I don't like even versus the Dolphin game. I know we were confident, but I didn't sit there and I don't think I was too like the offense is going to score 30 and where it felt like it at first it did, but, I didn't really get that feeling where I was like, the offense is going to score 30. I almost want to pull a Charles Barkley and guarantee the Kansas City Chiefs are going to put up more than 30 points this game. 
I, I just feel that the offense is finally going to click this week. It, it, I, I, it's just hard for me to, to, to see after a bye week just the, the 21 points. And I'm not saying, oh, we'll lose if we don't score more than 24. No, I, I don't think so. With this defense, just the way they've been playing, we could win a game with, with 17, 20 points, 21 points, which they have been doing. But I think this is the, the week where it's like next on Tuesday, they're going to be looking up on ESPN. Patrick Mahomes, clear cut MVP. You know, this this Chiefs team's offense is back. I just feel some, you know, they, they haven't had that game yet. And I, I feel like this is that game. So, you know, I I I think Patrick Mahomes, if anything, Andy Reid, those like you said, those first 20 uh plays are just gonna be, you know, big time for the Kansas City Chiefs. And Steve Spagnuolo, I think he's gonna have something for Jalen Hurts. You know, what how do you how do you limit a, a guy like Jalen Hurts? Because he's able to get out of the pocket, he's able to look downfield, he's able to run on those the on on those uh tush pushes. What do you think, Steve Spagnola? Do you think he'll have anything ready for the tush push, Ooh. really? Oh, for the tush push? Man, I don't know. I saw they got stopped last game once or two games ago. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't really know how you – hey, if there's a if there's a way to stop it, let us know. You know what I'm saying? We do not know. Right. I have no clue. I don't know if it's personnel because you can have Aaron Donald up there and it's still going through. So, tush push – uh, that's that's probably gonna keep working, but I know Spags is for the passing plays, third and longs. I know Spags is bringing something nasty. Because when right. does he not? When does Spags not bring the nastiest blitzes you've ever seen? McDuffie or Sneed or Watson getting home almost immediately, causing a an errant first a, like early throw. So, man, Spags Spags is my new favorite coach. Like I, I love Coach Reed. He brought us two Super Bowls, but so did Spags, right. and Spags just. Something about a nasty blitz package that just is like mm, that's good football. Like Spags, hey, I, I, I'm geeking out over Spags right now. Hey, and this is the this is the guy that even after we won that Super Bowl 2019, people were like, "Is Spags the guy?" People right? Yeah, people, that. people want his job. People yeah. want his job. They, they saw they saw shades of Bob Sutton, but it's like, yeah, it, almost every player on the team was on that team last year. You know, now right. Spags has the guys. He has the corners. He yeah, has the that, edges. So, yeah, and let's let's remember, this is a guy who they had the, the guts enough to get rid of, you know, Justin Houston when he got there. Uh, they just got rid of Frank Clark. They just got rid of uh, Tyron Matthew. They got rid of, Tra- or, you know, Traverius Ward. They let him walk. They let all these veteran, like, Pro Bowl guys. Like, we see what Traverius Ward's doing with the 49ers. They let all this talent go. And he said, give me these guys. Yeah. And I promise you, I'm going to give you a top three defense. We, and, like, going into this year, there was so many people being like, our defense is going to be a pro. Our de- we just lost this guy and this guy. And it's like, Chiefs fans, when they brought in Drew Tranquil, You, this is the first time where Steve Fregnall has, like, the absolute perfect guys he wants. Like, these are the guys he wants, and look what he's done. Like, he is the MVP for this team right now. Yeah, we have the youngest defense in the league. Our average age on defense is like 25.3, which most football players are coming out seniors. So when they're in the league, they're 23 their first year. Our average guy is in like his third year. That is stupid. Right. And we have the best defense in the league. Like that is dumb. We we are set on defense. I'm so happy because, I mean, I feel like having a defensive team is a lot less stressful. Definitely. Yeah. I, remember, I remember days of shootouts. And it was just stressful because it was like, okay, yeah, we scored, but we were always worrying how much time was on the clock. Mm-hmm. You know, we were like, oh, do we allow too much time? Now it's not that. Now it's like, okay, they have the ball, our final drive. They're not going to score, though. So it doesn't matter how much time is on the clock. So, then- well, Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. No, you're good. Yeah, and it's it's weird because I think as a Chiefs fan, it is a lot less stressful because, like you're saying, like you're never going to be like, the defense gets a stop. Guess who you're handing the ball to? Like you're giving it to Mahomes. Before it was like, please just don't, like don't don't do this to Mahomes. Like please, like please don't do this to Mahomes. It's just like every time the team got the ball back with like a minute, two minutes left. It's like come on, like 2018, like even a little bit in 2019, 2020. It was just like like please, like don't don't do this to us. And now it's like 
even though our offense isn't doing good, and people may be listening to this and be like, yeah, like Jade and Zach, your offense stinks. It's like, yeah, but like I'm never – like it may – and it's, first of all, it doesn't stink. It stinks to us because we're used to yeah, 50 touchdowns a year from a host. It's the fifth-ranked offense in the league. We are yeah. the fourth-ranked uh, defense in the league. We are the fifth-ranked special teams in the league. That is the first time this happened since the 1999 Rams. The 1999 Rams are known as one of the greatest teams of all time, the greatest show on turf. So for these people who sit there and they're just so concerned, and oh, but the Chiefs and this and the Chiefs and that, this honestly, like big picture-wise, statistically, maybe one of the better Chiefs teams Patrick Mahomes has had. He's yeah. never had a defense who has done what they're doing now. And again, he's getting – yes, the offense is going to figure it out. If the defense keeps giving him extra possessions, I I, I promise you he's going to start turning these into points. So that's why, as, as a Chiefs fan, like you said, it is the confidence level for me. And people are like, are you concerned about your offense? No, I'm not. So I agree. The, my confidence level goes through the roof. I think this is the third best team we've had. If I had to rank them, I would have 2019 number one. Mm-hmm. I know 2020, like statistically during the regular season, we were better. And obviously we that was a good team. ran it. We ran to a crazy Bucks team. We win that league most of the years. And all um, the yeah, it was decimated. 2019 is number one, though, because how – like we just killed teams in the playoffs. We were down so much, and then we would just score right. seven touchdowns in a row. Like that. that is one of the greatest offenses ever, and the defense was so good at the end of the year. Then I'd go 2020. Then I'd go this year. Right. If I had to rank them. And, and people people forget about 2020. I'm glad you bring that up. Is people don't realize we lost. We the starters lost one game. One game. One game. They lost the starters. It was lost the Raiders one, game. They lost to the Raiders not, uh, by eight. And then they the the Chargers beat us because Chad Henney and yeah. third string players played. So people forget like that team literally only like they won, I, I think, 16 games. Like they they went off 15 games. They went off that year. That was a really, really good team. So 2020's up there, but 2020's defense wasn't as nearly as good as it no, now. It and yeah, you may say, oh, they, like I think Rasheed Rice is gonna start, you're gonna start seeing him be just more of that Juju Smith Schuster guy. Not this kind of like a a tight end, kind of just you know, turn and face, turn and face guy. And like you said, he doesn't have the best separation, but you know, he's a he is a a, a, a good size receiver. So I think in his burst is crazy. Like you said, Stupid. his run after the catch is crazy. So I think he's definitely going to be an X factor from this game. Who are your three X factors for this game? If you're your three X factors for the Chiefs, and then if you can give me your player to watch out for on the Philadelphia Eagles before we get out of here. All right. The X factors, I mean, two of them are on defense. Sneed, just like every single week, because Sneed has the toughest assignment of any player on our team every mm-hmm. single week. Every week, Snead is the outside corner guarding the number one, whether it's Sutton, whether it's Tyreek Hill, and now it's A.J. Brown, and he's mm-hmm. arguably a top three receiver in the league. And so it's going to be Snead. He has to play with the physicality. We can excuse the penalties that he commits because we're giving him the toughest task, and as long as he contains them, doesn't allow 30-yard, 40-yard gains, I'm okay with it. So Snead's number one, and number two is Tranquil, and it's less because – it's more because we need him to fill Bolton's shoes. Right. We need Tranquil to tap into his run-stopping bag and give us anything similar to Nick Bolton because they are going to run the ball and they yep. are going to run it well and they're going to get to that second level where Tranquil's at. They're not. They're going to get through our defensive line on most of the carries. They're going to have five, six yards carried. So we need Tranquil big time to stop those, uh, yep. stop those runs from getting into the secondary. And yep. then on offense – we need Patrick. No, I it was Patrick Mahomes a fair X factor. Like, is that fair to say? I mean, he's our he's, I, I feel like he's always the X factor. You know, he is the ultimate. You know, equalizer. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, I won't say Patrick Mahomes then. Uh, let let let's go with MBS because I, let's go with MBS because I mean he's a boomer bust player and he's been yeah. better over the last few weeks. The, the early in the season he was just a ghost. He didn't do anything at all, but he's a, he's a deep threat. He's the only deep threat we really have that runs vertical and he can make big plays and we're going to have to make big plays. Cause we can't, like you said earlier, we don't score fast. We're not just no. going to be able to just, we, we have uh, some of the more turnovers in the league 
and we are not the most efficient offense like we normally are. And so at some point we need to get big plays like last year, we could easily just trot down the field over and over again because we were the most efficient offense. And so right. we didn't need the big plays like that. We need it from MVS uh, because there's really no one else to get those big plays. MVS, I, I, I was going to have him as my X factor as well, because it's like even last year, like he wasn't great last year, but he was legitimately the guy who was boomer bust. He would either have no catches or he would have two catches for 90 yards. And one of those went for 50 yards. And it's like, listen, I, I know you don't like to be called. I'm, I'm going to talk right into the camera, MVS. I know you don't like to be called MVS. Mark has valid. He doesn't? Family. He doesn't? No, he hates me. Why? To, I don't know. He doesn't. When people in the media call him uh, Marquez or they, uh, call him MVS, he says, don't call me MVS. So they want him, we, he, he wants us to call him Marquez Valdez Cantley. No, he just wants to be called Marquez or you just say his full name. Oh, okay. That's interesting. MVS yeah. is dope. If, I, if my initials was MVS, I would mess with it heavy. Yeah, apparently he doesn't like the abbreviation. But uh, right now, you don't, we're going to call you MVS until you start being Marquez. Okay. So right. Marquez. That's all I'm asking. Just have a 40 yard catch. I don't care if you don't, if you if you don't catch another pass this long. One that can set up the run. Just please one that can just set up a big play. That's all you did last year, pretty much. Just give us one of those, and I think we'll be just fine. I think another guy is Jarek McKinnon. They can get that screen game going. That man was the screen. I call him the screen guy because last year he had like six touchdowns off of the screens. So I think he's another X factor. Um, for the Kansas City Chiefs, if they can get him the ball, that's huge. Another guy who I think has been sneaky is Noah Gray. They can get—I know Travis Kelsey's going to be out there, and let's not like statistically, we score our most po- our the most points we score is in thirteen personnel. So if we're in thirteen personnel, Noah Gray's out there. Please, Noah Gray, Noah's Ark, whatever you have to be for this game, go out there and ball out. Go out there and ball out because they're going to be locked in on Kelsey. They're going to be locked in on some of these other players. And one of these guys, and, and even Canarius Tony, one of these guys, if they can just get a big play on these guys and uh, they have to go to more of a deep coverage, and then we're able to work things underneath, I think that's huge. Um, and the guys to watch out for on the Eagles, a guy I think we got to watch out for is because, like I said, we always shut down the number ones is the number two, and that's Devontae Smith because there is no Goddard. Goddard would be that guy because he is for like tight ends versus us. We struggle versus some tight ends. And Dallas Goddard is such a big target. He did well in the Super Bowl versus us. But uh, I'm going to go with Devontae Smith just because he's such a quick guy. And uh, sometimes they'll put Watson on him. Watson's just a bigger corner, so he struggles with those quicker guys. Um, So I'm going to go with Devontae Smith. Is there anybody on the Eagles before we get our final takes here on the TVT podcast before this Monday Night Football? Now you're saying that the Kansas City Chiefs got to watch out for this guy for the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, uh, for me, it's DeAndre Swift um, because, like I said, they're going to be running the ball. They're going to try to run the ball down their throats, and he really is being unlocked in Philadelphia mm-hmm. because in Detroit he kind of was underutilized for how good he looked. Like, he looked really good. Right. Uh, I heard that there were concerns about him, like, being able to hit holes and, like, having good vision, but that seems to have uh, improved this year because he's he's balling out, honestly. Um, right. People thought going into the year it would be like a – there's like four, there's four formidable running backs on the team, but DeAndre Swift has taken the lead. And uh, so if he can make our linebackers and uh, guys in the secondary miss, I mean, he can have a lot of big runs. Because like I said, the Eagles don't really get, you don't get hands on their backs before the second level that often, just because mm-hmm. of how strong their line is. So DeAndre Swift is my one to watch on the Eagles. Um, if he has a big game, they're going to have a big game. And yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I think he is going to be the main key to this game is the run game. If they can get him and turn it along, you know what Steve Fagnola is going to do. All right, that leaves us into our last segment, the game predictions. Zach, as always, you're going to start it off. Give us the final game prediction for Monday Night Football, a family reunion ball. T. Swift and the family is going to be in the crowd. Donna and, 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 and Ed Kelsey is going to be in the crowd. What's going to happen at Airhead on Monday Night Football? Now, I was I was debating this because, I mean, like, I'm on a Chiefs podcast. You know, you, you got to, like, even if it's close, you got to say the Chiefs win. 
I think that I don't – if I had to be 100% honest with God, what do I think is going to happen in this game? I think the Eagles will beat us 27-24. 27-24. 27 I think it's going to be the most points we allow all year, which 27 points being the most is insane. If that mm-hmm. stands true, our defense is legit, and we will go to the Super Bowl. And 24 points is not bad for this offense that we've seen so far. All right. But I think – the pace is going to be slowed down by them running the ball. They're going to be able to get in the end zone because they have the tush push. They have the ultimate third and short, fourth and short cheat code. And, yeah, I think I think they'd be as 27-24 if I'm being 100% honest to God. Hey, at TBT Podcast, as much as we love our Chiefs, and everyone knows we love our Chiefs, you got to be honest. The Chiefs are going into a game where they're outmatched and this team has their number or you think the Chiefs are going to lose. you got to go with that team. Uh, I may be a homer. I, I I do think there's some losses coming from the Chiefs here soon. But I don't think it's going to be one of these. I just think Andy Reid off of a bye, 24-3. and three. You have him versus former team. He's 4-0. I know those stats, it's like Chiefs fans may be listening to us going, Jaden Shush, you're jinxing us. But it's like, I just feel like Andy Reid, like there's just something about like when he gets with a guy like Mahomes, he's like, this is their game plan. If we stick to this. We got this team. We just played this team in the Super Bowl. You know, their secondary is weaker. You're a guy that's going to be able to explode their secondary. I think the Chiefs are going to be able to win 31 to 27. Similar type score. I think the Chiefs do give up close to 30 points. But I think 31 27. I think the Chiefs get a turnover late in the game to go down and score. The Chiefs close it out with a sack at the end of the game, trying to bring down Jalen Hurts. But I have the Chiefs winning. 31 27. Guys, if you guys have a game prediction, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comment section. Um, of course, comment here on YouTube. And if this is up on TikTok, make sure you guys comment on TikTok. Zach, before we get out of here, any last words for the Chiefs fans? Yeah, Chiefs fans, do not put too much stock into this game because this is not a. I know that they're a great team facing in the Super Bowl, but we have. We've been through it all as Chiefs fans, okay? We've seen the ups and the downs, and we've seen downs in the Mahomes era, and we've always rebounded. And so even though I predict that we're going to lose this game, we're still Super Bowl champs. We're going to win the game. We're going to win the Super Bowl. And so do not put too much stock in this game. There you have it, folks. Chiefs fans, again, like you said, it may not go our way on Monday, but that's okay. We will still – no matter what happens on Monday, the Chiefs will still be the first seed in the AFC. Hopefully they get it done versus the Philadelphia Eagles and the Family Reunion Bowl. We will see you guys after the game, after this Chiefs game on Monday. Uh, it'll be a little bit later in the week, but we will have a review plus a recap video later on in the week. We will see you guys next time on the TPT Podcast. 